torch and then when you're back. Okay, can you hear me? Hopefully the answer is yes. I was speaking to the technology gods earlier and wishing for the best, but you know, they're pretty busy today with all the live streams going. I'm gonna keep talking, see if you can hear me, but I'm not getting a lot of responses. Oh. Sonia, can you hear me now? Oh, I'm getting lots of yeses, okay, but my sister said no, and she's in Portland. Okay, <laughs> anyway, yay! That was a very short delay, so yay, okay. Um, so, gratulé le metog in Norge. Today is Sitten of May, the 17th of May, the most important holiday in Norway. So I'm dressed up today, I'm wearing my bunad. The bunad is the national folk costume of Norway, and mine is from Hedmark, slash a flea market. And I sh should be wearing a Roglan bunad because that's where my roots are from. But um, I'm wearing this because I have it and it's still awesome. So to start out today, I'm gonna start with the Norwegian national anthem to celebrate Norway. And if you know the words, sing along. It's called Ja vi elsker dette landa, which means yes, we love our land or this land. Living in, living in Norway when I was 20, I went to this concert and we had to sing the American National Anthem and the Norwegian National Anthem and I got teary-eyed singing both of them. So both of those, these anthems mean a lot to me as a Norwegian American. So I hope some of you sang along. Ah, and my mom, my mom studied for a year in Hedmark. So I, maybe I do have some connection to Hedmark through my mother who studied there. <laughs> Thanks, Dad, for your nice comment. All right, so I'm gonna start with the first tune called Rotnams Knut. This is one of the first hollings I learned at St. Olaf College when I studied there in 2007, or I graduated in 2007. And this is a holling, it's a very acrobatic dance. And traditionally, a man tries to do an aerial and hit a hat off of a pole. And if they succeed, then they get a date at the end. So here's Rotnans Knut. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was Rotnimsknit Halling. And can someone just give me a yes or thumbs up if you're seeing the titles of the picture or of the names of the tunes on the bottom? Um, we're trying something new, and my wonderful partner Peter has worked really hard on fancy technology that I know very little about. So if you see it, great. <laughs> Yay! Okay, thanks, Nancy. Ooh. Okay, great, thank you. Um, the next tune I'm gonna play is called Vara Lauskar, and it actually means The Bachelor. Um, and it's a springer from Valdres, so it has an uneven foot pattern. You might not be able to hear the feet pattern, but the dancers rely sometimes on hearing the feet so that they know where the beat is if the tune is really complicated or if they don't know the tune. Any Vara Lauskar. watching this. Well, most of you are home watching this. Um, thanks for celebrating Sitnamai. I know a lot of us who live in Seattle would be in Ballard participating or watching the big parade. I think it's one of the biggest Sitnamai parades in the nation. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard that. So today is a really fun day and it's a bummer that we can't be out there celebrating on the streets with our flags. You see I have my flags here. Um, but I'm glad you're here listening to this today. I'm just going to tune one more time. One more time. Yeah, right. That'd be the craziest day ever. If you only had to tune your heart on her fiddle once. Oh, thank you, Karin. So Karin coach, she's in the chat there. She is a phenomenal Hardanger fiddler. I was inspired to start the Hardanger fiddle because a concert she gave in Gig Harbor, Washington in maybe 1999 or 1998 or something. And she's great at Walter Springer and all the tunes. So that is the first one off of her CD. And I listened to it a lot and I learned it actually just by listening to the CD. But otherwise you learn it by learning a tune from someone um, in person. And all the tunes are memorized. You learn them all by rote traditionally. So there's no sheet, sheet music here. Okay. I'm going to play a really silly waltz. It's called Turbjörn Valsen. And this is a waltz I learned in Stavanger when I was 20 years old from Dog Hovda. And I like it has a little bit of hip hip hurrah in it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Genevieve, I'm glad you like that one. Yeah, I like uh, fun little waltzes. I'm going to play pretty much upbeat tunes today to celebrate Sit and I. Although, to be honest, most of the Heart on Her Fiddle tunes are pretty upbeat and happy sounding. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad, Ken, that I that you now know the name to that tune. Awesome. Um, great. If what was I going to say? Oh yes, if if you would like to contribute a tip, um, I have a little overlay in this corner here. Maybe I'm my hands on top of it. Anyway, I accept Venmo and PayPal, and if you would like to offer anything, that's awesome. If not, that's also totally fine. So I hope you enjoy this little concert. Um, I'm going to play another hauling. I, one of the first tunes I played was a hauling. There's some of my favorite tunes to play, and this one is called Laos, Ecter Ula Deco. Laos is actually the same word for hauling. Um, and so it's just a louse after Ula Deco. tune recently maybe in the last recently maybe in the last four years actually three years two years I have no idea but I like playing tunes that are new and also tunes that I've known for 16 17 years um, and they change a little bit because just like language and dialect there are certain things that might change depending on the player depending on your mood depending on your forgetfulness um, but that's kind of the fun part of um, folk music and Hard Hunger Fiddle. Um, some of you might have no idea what the Hard Hunger Fiddle is and you just were saw this or were invited somehow. Um, so just a very brief story about the Hard Hunger Fiddle. It's the National Folk Instrument of Norway, hence why we're, I'm playing it today. Woo! Hip hip rah, sitting in my. And um, yes, it's pretty different than the violin. It has four, five, sometimes three, um, under strings, so sympathetic strings that go underneath the fingerboard. You don't actually play them, but they just resonate if your tune, if your strings on top are perfectly in tune. And so, um, if they're not really in tune, then they're not going to resonate. So that's why it's important to tune all the time. And the bridge here is a lot flatter than the violin, 
So you're always playing two strings at once called double stops. And obviously it's beautiful and ornate. This design is called Rose Malling or the Painting of Roses. And this fiddle was made in 1999 by Lynn Berg, who lives in Eugene, Oregon. So, fauna to Lynn. <laughs> um, I would have to get my other fiddle and tune it and I kind of learned fauna to Lynn many years ago, but I would have to relearn it. Um, it has a different tuning. So next time, Geyer, I will play that next time. <laughs> I do have another fiddle, but I haven't taken it out for a while. So and you're on YouTube, which is amazing. And if you haven't cl clicked subscribe yet, please subscribe. I would love to get to over a thousand subscribers by the end of May. I don't know. I just made that up, but it would be nice to have more. Okay. This next tune is Sindabukin. This is a tune I also learned at St. Olaf, but forgot for many years and picked it up recently. And it's a springar from southwestern Norway. Um, this map might be tiny, but this is Norway. And all the tunes are pretty much from here and down. So in the southern area of Norway. And this tune is from the western southern part. Sindabukin. had some parts of it that were just playing single strings on the lower the lowest string you may have heard just single notes or if it went by too fast that's also fine and 
that's sometimes challenging because I'm so used to playing two strings at once. But if you heard that, nice ears. And yes, dad, you're right. Sindvukin means scapegoat or the scapegoat. Um, so I don't know who's the scapegoat in this equation, but you can choose. All right. I'm going to play one more tune on the hard on her fiddle, and then I'm actually going to pick up my Van Liefela, my regular violin, and play a little medley for you for Sit in the Mai. But this tune is called Klunken, and actually you can, play, you can play a lot of tunes on the violin. Some of them totally don't work, but this next tune is a tune that I could play on the regular violin, because I learned this in the Gig Harbor Spedemannslag when I was... I don't know, in middle school or something. But it's silly and I like it and it's a Rhinelander called Klunken. listening or I mean adults will like this too but I always like the nan and a boo boo part I think my singing was really bad and out of tune but whatever it's fine okay so I created a little medley earlier today I mean I've been working on this for a really long time this medley um and ooh, my bow is hitting crazy things this medley includes um, a couple of tunes, two tunes, that are common Norwegian folk songs. And, oh yes, Karn Code. Oh nice, yeah, you played Klunken in the group when you came to Seattle. Awesome! Um, okay, so yeah, this medley has Per Spellman and Alle Fugle. So, on Sutnamai in Norway, when I was living there as a kid, we were part of the International School of Stavanger Parade, and this is one of the songs we sang every single year. And it's actually in a Suzuki book, too. It's called May Song. Um, so if you know either of these songs, please sing along. Oh, hi, Rebecca. It's so nice to see um, not lots of fiddlers watching this. I hope you're enjoying it. Whoa, the violin is so much lower than the fiddle. I forgot to mention that if you don't know much about the fiddle, the hardanger fiddle is generally, most of the time, it's a whole step higher than the violin. So the violin in relationship is called the flat fiddle because it's flatter in pitch, lower in pitch. All right, so Per Spellman and Alle Fugle. <laughs> Small d air. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Teresa, fellow Oli, yay. Thank you, Claire, for the claps. So I hope you could hear a difference between the two instruments. And yeah, it's kind of, I had to shift playing the violin right now and it's, you don't really shift in harmonica fiddle. So that almost threw me off. All right, got out your letter with organ and hip hip hurrah. I wish I was in Norway celebrating, but I know that they're stuck indoors too. So hopefully we could just all celebrate together all around the world. Thank you so much for being here and listening. And um, I'm a freelance musician in Seattle. And as you know about, well, all my gigs, about 75% of my income was taken away. And so if you feel like giving a couple bucks for my virtual tip jar, my handles are there, Venmo and PayPal and all the things. You can find me, Rachel Nesvig. So thank you so much. And thanks for listening in. Oh, cool, guy or yeah. Barna School, yeah, we learned a lot of these tunes we learned when we were little in kindergarten and whatnot. All right, I'm gonna play Belstetoppen. It's a Hallingspringer. And this is another one of those tunes that I learned and then totally forgot because I didn't review it. Because if you don't review it, you forget it. And I relearned it just for you. Well, no, I actually played this on my last live stream, but it's Halling Springer. <laughs> for myself in Norway. Woo! <laughs> I'm getting some hands there. Um, difference between Halling and Hallingspringer. So a Halling is a dance and a Halling is an ac acrobatic dance um, from Hallingdal. But when you're in Hallingdal they call it a louse but it's the same thing. Um, the Halling is the really acrobatic dance. I urge you to YouTube Halling and you'll find some phenomenal fiddle and dancing videos, really cool dancing. It's almost like break dancing. Um, and a Halling Springer is a dance, a Springer from Hallingdal, if that makes sense. So there are lots of Springers all around. And I would say the most common ones are Tele, Tele Springer, Halling Springer, Valder Springer. And there's also Springers from Vestlona or Western Norway. And those are the ones that I learned originally um, that's where my roots are from, from the Stavanger area. Actually, a little town called Nesvik. So you can also Google that. It is not on the map, it's too small. Well, it might be on the map, I don't know. Somewhere over there. 
And oh yeah, Rebecca Loft is answering in a more theoretical way. The hauling has always just felt more, yeah, and two in general. Um, it does depend. And the springer is a f dance in three. And sometimes the three is uneven. Mostly the three is uneven. Okay, very complex stuff. Yes, I'm so glad there are Havanger Fiddle experts in the chat, so you guys can just answer the tough questions. Um, but also, they're awesome fiddlers, so it makes me so nervous. Well, I, I'm doing okay, but I, you know, it is, it's good to be challenged. All right, I'm gonna play a Vasa rule, and this is more of a twirling round dance. And this is called Vasa rule at the Brita Larchur. I learned this at St. Olaf as well. Woo! And this one is, this is one of the hardest ones to learn. It has so many pieces, it has these things called vex, and they're just little motives that change a little bit, but sometimes go back to the same one. And I know that one of my students, Genevieve, right now is watching this and she's learning it right now. And it's been hard to learn. <laughs> no, I mean, she's doing a great job, but it's, it's long and I don't know what the right word is. Twerky is not a word. Um, quirky? No. Twingly? No, that's not a word either. <laughs> it, it's kind of like a tongue twister. There we go. Wow, I just said all those weird words on live YouTube, but it's fine.
I believe. Okay. Oh, here we go. If that's the least of the technical problems, I am pleased. Okay, so yes, Genevieve, it is <laughs> challenging in a good way. Um, I was thinking of something to say when I was playing that, which of course you're not supposed to be doing <laughs> multitasking, but now I forgot, which is fine. Thank you for the claps. I'm gonna just tune another time. subscribed yet I think it's in this corner oh down here okay my lovely assistant Peter is helping me with all these things <laughs> great partner partner in life helping me with all these things please subscribe it'd be awesome to get more subscribers and tell your friends to subscribe so all right feel free to ask any questions I know Pam you've been asking questions and clapping thanks I love seeing all the comments it's really nice Oh, next is my improv section. Um, I've been doing this on most of my live shows. And if you think of a couple of words, maybe something especially that has to do with Norway or Sitnamai today, that would be great. And I'll play a little improvised tune for you. I had a lot of fun. I think the last stream was about viola and dinner or flowers, or maybe I'm mixing them all together, but... Um, oh yeah, Dr. Hansen was such a good teacher. I took American music with her and it was really hard. <laughs> but she was a great teacher. Oh my gosh, I have water. So yeah, improv suggestion. And feel free to email me, nesvigar at gmail.com if you have any, um, if you have seen this show and a Facebook live show and have comments or which one you liked better, sound quality, audio, that's the same, video. <laughs> and I have a song. Okay, got one suggestion here from Teresa. Any other? Ooh, trolls, ooh. Improv on the opening feeling of morning mood. Okay, that's, that's enough suggestions. Um, Trolls, Grieg, see if any pop up. Birds, that, that's mine. I just made that up, but I always want to play about birds. Okay.
So that was a little conversation between a troll and a bird. Another request for Fauna to him, and I'll have to relearn it and tune and get my other fiddle up and running. That is a good motivation for next time. So thank you, and I'll try to do that. All right, I'm gonna play another Valdres Springa. This is called Erskesekken, and I learned this in person with by Con Code. And if she's still watching, then I hope I play it well. Thanks, Sonia. Thanks, Dad. That was a great idea, Dad, about the the morning mood. Okay, let's go second. If you play fiddle out there and you've ever worn a cilia, this is what a cilia is called, um, or this is what this is called, a cilia, that it can hit your instrument and rattle. Um, that was happening during that. So I know you feel my pain, Rebecca and Karen, um, and buzzes like zzz while you're playing. It's a, it's a fun game to try to combat that. Um, thanks, Sonia, for liking my improv. Nur für Halling. I do not know that one, Pam. If you email me that, I will look it up and try to learn it. Teresa, do some regions in Norway have more complicated music? And if so, which ones? I would say it kind of depends. Um, within Hardanger Fiddle, there are two branches of music as well. There's the Gammeldans and the Vigdedans. And the Gammeldans has more of the more the simple like waltzes. I mean, not they're all not all simple, but ganga, um, waltzes, polkas, mazurkas. And the big dons have the Halling and Springar, and they're more complex tunes. And I would say of the Halling, the Valdres and Halling, and of the Springar, the Valdres Springar, Halling Springar, and Tele Telespringar are more complicated rhythmically than 
in southwestern Norway or Vestland, Western Norway. So, hope that answers your question. All right, I have five more, six more tunes. One, two, three, six more tunes for you to celebrate Sitnamai. Oh my gosh, Ken, I'm about to play Bridal March. You were on the same wavelength here. This is actually, I played this at my sister's wedding, how many years ago? 15 years ago or something. And it's called Bridal March at Trigve Fuglisa. And so yeah, here's a bridal march for you. So, speaking of bridal marches, my lovely assistant Peter and I got married last July, and so I was thinking about him during this, and he's been very helpful, doing so much work with the overlays, words that I didn't even know existed, um, OBS, audio interface, all these new words I'm learning. And so, if you tip me in my Venmo or PayPal account, I promise I'll buy him a beer at the grocery store. <laughs> um, so anyway, and give him some claps because he's been awesome and has devoted more time to this than I have, let's be real. I mean, not playing the fiddle, but like the time spent today preparing for this. He spent a lot of time. So, um, uh, yeah. Oh, there's some claps. Good. Yeah, the Sulia is, it's hard. Uh, my Bunad's from Headmark. And it's pretty old school and nice and warm, which is usually good for May in Norway. Not as great for this room right now. Pretty warm, but I'd rather be warm than cold. All right. The next tune is called Ja, Norvjert. And it means, yes, now it is done. Um, it's actually also played at a wedding, but it is uh, Vassarul. And so it's more circular dance. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say about this one. Oh, there's the Sulia. Oh, 
oh yeah, I was gonna say, this one, if you're trying to keep a, a steady beat, so this one's kind of hard to follow, even though it's just, the beat doesn't change, the music kind of plays with the beat. say something wrong? Well, anyway. Yes, Peter is doing all the titles right now. Oh, yes, and I apparently said the show will go a few minutes past 3.30 due to the technical difficulties to start. Oh, I hope you can all stay. I'm just gonna play four more tunes and two of them are pretty short. Oh, yes, it is 3.31. And hip hoop hurrah! Good afternoon, Miss Um, I'm gonna play a tune on my von Lipela, my regular violin. And it's because it's this needs a different tuning. And this one's a little darker, and I kind of like it played lower. So this is called Filavan, and it's also a hauling. <laughs> for listening. I have three more tunes for you all. And I'm going to play a springer from Vestlana, from Western Norway. And this one's kind of wild too. I'm going to end with some fun 
dancing so that if, you, if people are watching in Norway, I had a couple, some Akavit by now, so hopefully you can dance around. Celebrate the beautiful country of Norway. All right, this is called Ola Valong. Ola was tall. two more songs though so you can hear my two last songs and then you can join for the next one two more songs and Bali is amazing I was there a few years ago and yeah that's incredible okay this one's called good moon Dansen or good moon Dansen and it's called good moon's dance basically <laughs> and it's a polka and this one I learned in Norway in 2006 and from Dag Hovda and this one sounds very Celtic it's from southwestern Norway, and so a lot of the tunes were kind of passed through ships to Scotland, the Shetland Islands, and whatnot. clapping in my ears and my head um thank you so much for joining today and 
If you have there, I'm receiving tips in my virtual tip jar, Venmo and PayPal. You should be able to find me. And thank you so much for listening. Gracias, Lena Madagan. Sitting on my woo. My last tune I'm going to play is an oldie but a goodie. This was one of the first tunes I learned, and it's actually one of the first tunes that I teach my students. And I love the harmonies in it, and it's also one of Peter's favorites. It's called Fikin, and it's a hauling. They're so fun to play. Thank you so much, everyone who listened and watched. And I hope that Norwegians are celebrating their wonderful country. I know a lot of Americans are celebrating Sitna Mai today, too. So thank you for celebrating with me and Peter, though you can't see him. Um, thank you for tuning in, watching in, and Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's down here somewhere. And yeah, thanks so much. Tell people to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Feel free to email me with any questions. And thank you, Jeff, for watching again. And all the new people that I haven't met, thanks for being here. So, gratulera medagen, and catch you next time. This is down at 6%.